The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light, sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So yes, Doctor, regarding the importance of Abu Talib alayhi yeah. salam to Islam. Yeah. Um, before I come to that, um, during the extreme suffering, you know, when um, the, the Bani Hashim, under that very uh, severe sanction that they had uh, placed against Bani Hashim, um, and they could see, Quraysh, we could see the suffering, they could hear, children crying mm -hmm. um, they thought that um, it's now time because there's so much pressure on Abu Talib salam, there is so much suffering going on um, and they may have come to the end of their limits, patience or patience. limits and they made him offer again they made him an offer they said look you surrender Muhammad to us for us to deal with him and we'll make you a king over us. Subhanallah. Imagine how desperate they were to get rid of the Holy Prophet Either meaning that or meaning we make you the master uh, over ourselves. That basically mm. we become your slaves. So Quraysh made such an offer to Abu Talib alayhi salam. And this offer was made to him under extreme circumstances. He, he needed the slightest help he could, he mm. could get. He needed the slightest food and water uh, to give to his people, to Bani Hashim. But what did Abu Talib alayhi salam do? He rejected, of course. He rejected the offer. And this also comes to show where Unfortunately, it is being said a, a lot of negatives about Abu Talib, which came later on. Yeah, we can go through it later regarding the Bani Umayyah propaganda against Bani Hashim. Yeah. But it shows this historical fact, even in such a difficult time, Abu Talib would not abandon the Holy Prophet mm -hmm. How could a Kafir do that? Yeah. It makes no sense. Log yeah. It makes no logical sense whatsoever. Yeah. This proves the Iman that Abu Talib had that he would sacrifice everything, including his life for Rasulullah yeah. Exactly. This, uh, um, um, <clears throat> uh, um, of course, the, this, all of this um, false fabrication came afterwards because they, Quraysh lost everything. Mm -hmm. Um, they wanted to, they had two objectives, basically. One, to kill the Prophet Sallallahu And secondly was to um, expel or, uh, Bani Hashim from Mecca. Get rid of them all once and for all. Okay, expel them so that they don't, and they couldn't do either. Mm. Um, so they made this offer to him, they were desperate, and they thought he is at, at, at his weakest point. They made this offer to him that he becomes their king, he becomes their owner. Yeah. They become his slave. Um, Abu Talib alayhi, was having none of that. And he steadfast, he persevered with the, with the hardship until that miracle came. Um, the miracle of um, that document being destroyed by termites, which um, we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. um, um, so if, if you look at the whole scenario, of what, what happened, all these events, hmm. until um, they, uh, um, they came out, they were, if you like, free from that embargo, the embargo was lifted. Um, you see that under his leadership, they protected, Bani Hashim protected the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was pr playing a pivotal role. If it wasn't for the leadership of, the, of Abu Talib Alayhi uh, on the clan of Bani Hashim, um, 
the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would have been destroyed. He would have been killed easily. Mm. Um, so um, it proved so critical the protection and the leadership of Abu Talib alayhi salam during especially these three years. He did all he could and he succeeded alhamdulillah uh, in protecting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Every night he was protecting him. He, he was getting his sons and other devout uh, members of Bani Hashim uh, to sleep in his place, changing his place uh, uh, continuously throughout the night. Um, he sleeps one hour here, one hour there. Um, uh, so that in case you have um, um, people trying to target him and, and, and assassinate him from a distance um, and during, the, during the night, in the darkness of the night, um, this went on for three years. And the perseverance that he showed, despite all the efforts that, uh, sorry, the offers were being made to him. Uh, so the role of Abu Talib السلام, was absolutely critical to the future of um, Islam. And uh, therefore, every single Muslim from then onwards, all of us, and until Yom Al-Qiyamah, until the Day of Judgment, we really owe our religion to Abu Talib السلام. Of course, we have hadith from the Prophet which says, if it wasn't for the, um, uh, the wealth of uh, Sayyidah Khadija alayhi salam and the, uh, the role of the sword of Imam Ali alayhi salam, uh, Islam would have been, wouldn't have been uh, established or um, uh, erected. <clears throat> the same goes for the role of Abu Talib alayhi salam uh, throughout uh, the period of mission uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa especially during the three years uh, of uh, embargo against the Prophet sallallahu So, uh, migration, we have uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sending a delegation uh, with the, um, the head of it, Ja'far al-Tayyar ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. So, how, how did it begin? How, if, if we can get some information regarding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, organizing this um, delegation, the preparation of it and all. Yes, um, given the persecution of the uh, Muslims at the hand of Quraysh, um, the, the Prophet Sallallahu decided to send <coughs> a group of them, um, basically ask them to, whoever they wanted, they could go to um, um, Ethiopia, uh, which is the Habasha, it is known in Arabic, in order to, save, if you like, save them the hardship that they were facing. <coughs> um, and before that, <coughs> a group of ten um, in the month of Rajab, in the year uh, five after Ba'sa, um, <coughs> A group of ten went uh, uh, went to Abyssinia or today's Ethiopia, the Habasha, and um, to, if you like, um, prepare the grounds. <coughs> and they came back within two months. And then um, the migration of the Muslims, <coughs> uh, which were <coughs> more than eighty, <coughs> headed by Jafar Tayyar. This was uh, in, in the month of the Hajj. Of course, um, this I just want, want to open between brackets. This issue of migration wasn't limited. Um, <coughs> so it wasn't something new to the Muslims. Um, they uh, used to go uh, travel uh, to various parts, nominally the Sham or the, the Rome, which basically by Rome in the Arab language they mean the Byzantine Empire, which is today's Turkey. Um, the Sham, Rome, Yemen, and even Habasha. They used to go there for trades. And in fact, this was established by uh, the uh, by Hashim ibn Abdul Munaf, which is the great grandfather of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi. He signed a trade a, gr a trade agreement with <coughs> with the Caesar of uh, the Byzantine Empire um, uh, in Ankara. Um, he also signed similar treaties 
um, you know, trade agreement with the rulers of uh, the Levant or the Sham, uh, Syria, if you like, uh, and also the, the ruler of Yemen and the ruler of uh, Habasha, the Abyssinia, or uh, today's Ethiopia. <coughs> so that uh, being the head of Quraysh, he did that on behalf of Quraysh, and uh, uh, and he was ha he was of course respected the, uh, amongst Quraysh and he was respected by the rulers of other countries, and um, so that the uh, traders of Quraysh could go to these countries and do business uh, in safety and legally according to the permission of the which has been signed and agreed to um, uh, previously. <clears throat> so migrating to Abyssinia wasn't something new. Um, even, for example, Abdul Muttalib, when um, the king of Yemen, Abraham, who came to destroy the Kaaba, when he was, he was removed from, from power and replace, someone who replaced him was called Saif bin the Yezen, <coughs> um, Abdul Muttalib went to meet him and to sign new trade agreements uh, with the new king of Yemen. Uh, so they were busy doing deals and signing agreements so that they could do business, basically. Mm -hmm. um, during the summer, they used to go to Sham, for example, to the <coughs> north. During the winter, they go to the south, to Yemen. Rahla to Shita'i was safe. So this was established by uh, Hashim, uh, and uh, it was followed up by Abdul Muttalib, alayhi salam, the son of Hashim. Um, so it was, it was the norm, if you like, for people to go. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he, as I said, before the main uh, um, um, migration took place, he sent a delegation so that they could see and check the grounds and uh, do some preparation. Um, and then the main group of Muslim that went for migration to escape the persecution of uh, uh, Quraysh was in the month of the Hajj year five, uh, headed by Ja'far ibn Abi Talib And um, when uh, Quraysh heard about that, that such a large p number of people went there, and uh, they've been, uh, they have found safety in Abyssinia, they decided to send two of their uh, uh, top people, if you like, um, to uh, um, Abyssinia, mm. and to ask the king not to give them refuge. Okay. And of course, they took with them a lot of gifts, mm -hmm. and um, they went there, and they gave a lot of gifts to the officials, and then they made an appointment so that they could see the king. Uh, the king referred being the Negus or the Najashi, as it's said in Arabic, um, <coughs> which is the title of the king uh, of Ethiopia, the Negus, and um, these two people were. Um, one of them was Amr ibn al-As, and the other one was Amar ibn al-Walid. And they saw the king, and they said, you have given refuge to people uh, from our uh, uh, tribe, if you like, and we want you to send them back. They have uh, revolted against us. Mm -hmm. they, have, uh, they are feeble-minded, and um, um, we want you to be kind enough to return them. And the officials around the king, they said, yes, they should be returned to them. And the king refused. He said, well, let me, let me listen, let me hear what they have to say. Uh, How was the king um, with regards to his personality? Was he a wise man? Was he, he was a Christian. He was a Christian. Uh, was he um, religious? Was he a wise person? How, what was his character like? Um, well, from his conduct, you could see that, you could see that sort of wisdom uh, that he had, even though his officials were saying, saying to him that, yes, uh, these people shouldn't be, should be sent back. Hmm. He refused. He said, at least let me, let me hear what they have to say. Okay. And um, um, th they say that the, the Quraysh representative said that they have uh, abandoned our religion. And even though they <coughs> come to you, they haven't accepted your religion. They have come up with a new, with a new religion. <coughs> so he said, he, he sent for them and... Uh, uh, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, he, he spoke on behalf of the Muslim, uh, uh, Muslims there. And of course, this narration, one of the most authentic narration is 
uh, by on the authority of Umm Salama, who was amongst this uh, delegation. <coughs> um, and Umm Salama would be in the future. Uh, um, um Salama was sorry. She she she, uh, she was a lady that her, her husband when her husband dies uh, years later after this migration uh, when they return to Medina. Uh, she marries the Prophet sallallahu and okay. she is one of the loyal and devout uh, wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi as opposed to some others. <coughs> and this narration is uh, uh, on uh, authenticity of the narration is on the on the author authority of Umm Salama who narrates this, who was amongst the other people, uh, amongst the eighty people who were there, eighty Muslims. So. Um, uh, uh, Jafar ibn Abi Talib speaks uh, to the to the Najashi. He says, "We used to do all the wrong things. The weak used to the, the strong used to oppress the weak. Uh, murder was widespread. We used to worship idols and uh, drink alcohol and uh, um, <coughs> and um, do all sorts of um, 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 harm others, not being kind to the neighbors, and do all sorts of wrong things." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, uh, dispatched a prophet from us, from amongst us, who calls for the abandonment of idol worshipping. He calls for us to worship only Allah alone, and he has no partner and associate. And uh, to be kind to our neighbors, to be kind to the weak. Um, and he, uh, he prohibits wine and pro or alcohol. He prohibits usury, which you used to take. And he calls for uh, social justice. Um, and kindness and compassion amongst ourselves and keeping close bond of relatives between ourselves. So these are the values, these, these are, they, this is the reason, these are the reasons that we abandoned idol worshipping and we followed the, the Prophet uh, and his, his religion. And because of that, uh, our people started persecu uh, persecuting us and we decided, our Prophet said to us that uh, there is a just ruler in in Abyssinia, in Habasha, who doesn't do uh, uh, oppression or injustice to his <coughs> people. And that's why we have sought refuge in your land. And, um, and he accepted that. He says, fair enough. I mean, if this is um, what it is, I don't accept the notion that I, uh, I should abandon these people. They have come to my country, they have sought refuge, mm -hmm. and I don't see any reason not to give them, given the fact that, given the sort of persecution that um, they, um, they have been facing. And he said, Najashi said, um, uh, what has your prophet brought in terms of... Uh, so now he, ho he's interested book. in learning more about the religion of Islam. That's right. <coughs> and um, uh, Jafar ibn Abi, uh, Abi Talib alayhi he um, recited uh, the first few uh, ayahs, verses of the surah of uh, Maryam. <coughs> and basically it deals with the uh, supplication of, at the beginning it deals with supplication of uh, uh, Prophet Zechariah who asks uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him a son, give him, even though he was old and uh, his wife was old as well. And um, Allah said to, to him that Allah will give you um, uh, a son called Yahya, which was John the Baptist, if you like. Mm -hmm. And then, <coughs> so he, he read, recited these, and uh, um, he was very touched, the king of uh, Abyssinia, the Najashi, he was very touched by this, and it says that according to this uh, narration that um, he wept, and uh, in tears of Najashi flew down his face on his cheek, and he said, "Definitely, I'm not going to abandon you, and I'm going to leave you, uh, allow you to stay here in this country." Um, and they were very pleased, but obviously the representative of Quraysh, uh, Amr ibn As and uh, Amr ibn Wali. They were very uh, very upset, <coughs> and one of them said to the other after after the king left, he said, "We'll ask for another meeting tomorrow, and um, I'll tell them about what they say about Isa, about Isa ibn Maryam." <coughs> and he asked for a meeting, and he came. Mm. He said, "Okay, you should." He, he addressed the king, and he said to him, oh, "You should uh, you should ask the uh, Muslims what do they believe about 
uh, Isa ibn Maryam. So he was trying his best to get the king to dislike the exactly. Muslims. He was trying to stir up Because he thought things. by them giving the Islamic version of Nabi Isa, mm. salam, Prophet mm. Jesus, mm. he would get insulted. Mm. He, um, he called the Muslims and Ja'far ibn Abi Talib salam, came and um, he said, what do you have to say about Isa, Isa ibn Maryam? He said uh, he was the slave of Allah, his messenger, his word, and the spirit of Allah that he bestowed upon Mary, uh, uh, the pure. Mm. And Najashi was very impressed by that. He, he, uh, he said, we worship Allah, he has no partners, he has no associates, hmm. alone, and, here, and, and all creation are his creation, um, and we believe he is um, his messenger. Um, he turned back to the Quraysh reps and he said, you take your gifts, and I assure you that I'm not going to abandon these people, and I give them safety in this, in this country. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So now we have the, the Quraysh representatives will have to go back yeah. to Mecca and uh, inform um, Abu Sufyan and the likes of that um, they failed and now the king of Ethiopia has taken the side of the Muslims. What, what, what happens next? So uh, Jafar uh, ibn Abi Talib salam, stays in Ethiopia for how long? Um, okay, I mean, you've asked questions, we'll address this later on, but he stayed in Ethiopia overall, if you like, the hijra of Ja'far ibn mm. Abi Talib and yeah. the Muslims, uh, in particular Ja'far, well, took about 11 years. 11? 11 years. Okay, um, mashallah, that's plenty of time. Yes, I, I'll come back to this mm. to see what was the role of Ja'far ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Yeah. <coughs> also, I wanted to Hello. learn more about the influence of the Muslims in Ethiopia. Was Islam spread from there on? I wanted to learn more. What mm. was their influence? Did they have a, a, an effect in the land? Did people show interest to Islam? Uh, certainly. That was, in fact, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salam, he uh, stayed in Ethiopia. His role, his main role, other than the first initial escape from the persecution, mm. Uh, was uh, uh, to promote Islam, tabliq. to do tabliq, to, to promote Islam, to, call, to invite people to Islam. And in fact, um, now that you've asked this question, I was going to talk about something else, but um, in fact, what happens uh, during his stay in, in, uh, in Abyssinia, in the Habasha, mm, on a number of occasions, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, came along with a delegation of priests and bishops from Abyssinia to visit the Prophet in Mecca. Okay. And of course, Quraysh were very angry. This was a huge challenge to them, to their authority, that Ja'far comes and they can't do anything. They can't do anything to him. They wouldn't dare do anything to him because in the presence of 30 or 40 um, uh, priests and bishop, bishops officials from, uh, from the, uh, the kingdom from of country. Najashi yeah, from they the have to behave they have to behave otherwise it would be very bad for yeah. their reputation sanctions could follow yes yeah, still they had trade links with Najashi yes. they still have trade links with Yemen so they had to keep him happy so they could not show the true colors basically uh, show the true colors they couldn't do, uh, couldn't do any harm to him oh. so um, and in fact they he used to bring delegations uh, of officials, priests and bishops and so on. They used to come and talk. They used to meet the Prophet Sallallahu In fact, they used to meet in the mosque. MashaAllah. They used to meet in the mosque um, yeah. and listen to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet used to d have a dialogue with them, discuss and um, uh, various issues and whatever questions they had, he used to answer. Yeah. He used to recite the Quran to them or present the Quran to them. And <coughs> in majority of cases, people either there on the spot used to embrace Islam or when they went back, Masha they used Allah. to embrace Islam. So this, this was the mission of the, if you like, the second mission or the second aim of the mission of the migration. Um, 
that uh, they could uh, work on the king and on the officials there and on the people there. Um, and in fact, um, this, um, this worked, um, and we have hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who says um, that uh, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib alayhim salam he is engaged in jihad fi ard al-Habash. He is engaged in jihad lillah, uh, doing jihad for Allah in the uh, land of uh, Abyssinia. By jihad means tabliq. Struggle. No, no, by jihad means tabliq, not yeah. struggle. Uh, oh, he is I mean conveying, uh, he was yeah. conveying the teachings of Islam to them, the message of Islam to them, and inviting them to embrace Islam, which, in which he was very successful. And um, <coughs> um, if you like, the he planted the seeds of, if you like, uh, most of Africa or the <coughs> entire of North Africa becoming Muslim. Uh, it's from starts from there, Mashallah. there and then, from the efforts of Ja'far al yeah. And again, you see the importance of uh, Bani Hashim, the children of Abu Talib mm -hmm. salam, mm -hmm. how they 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 struggled and they. They dedicated their lives towards Islam. Yeah. More and more people from Abyssinia were coming to learn more from the Prophet and become Muslim, and therefore spreading the uh, message of Islam, uh, you know, beyond the seas. Uh, this was uh, too much for them. Um, they decided that they have to uh, do more. It was a decision that they have to kill the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi.